What's up guys, this is The Honest Outlaw here, and today we've got another First Shots video for you. Uh, we're gonna have quite a few of these coming up. I just purchased a bunch of guns for the channel, and one of them is the Glock 44. Uh, if you haven't heard about the Glock 44 yet, it is the new Glock 22 pistol. I believe it's their first venture into the 22 market. There's been a lot of 22 clones that simulate the uh, Glock 19 or a lot of conversion kits to allow you to convert your 19 to a 22, but there has been no manufactured uh, model from Glock specifically that you can use as a training aid to your Glock 19, let's say, which is what I think this is really designed around, or somebody that uh, wants a 22 pistol, but also shoots a lot of Glocks and they just want the same gun. This has come to the market very recently in the past few months, and uh, with some controversy as well. I had a hard time actually finding any reviews that were positive uh, with this gun. Apparently it has some reliability issues. So when I picked up this gun from my local gun shop, I also picked up a series of different 22 ammunition, including 22 mini mag, uh, standard CCI. Uh, we got some Winchester and we also have my classic Federal, or uh, sorry, Remington Golden Bullet, which if you are a uh, viewer of the channel know, I have in the area of 20,000 rounds of. So we will be using that if it does run. People are gonna say that's subpar ammunition. A lot of people are gonna give me crap for using different types of ammunition, but the reality is, is that we're just gonna try to see what works in the gun the best, and we'll worry about it after that. It also has the standard Glock striker fired trigger, uh, Glock sights, however they are. They look to be adjustable, which is kind of cool. Uh, it's got front slide serrations like the Gen 5s. It's got a magwell like the Gen 5. So imagine a Gen 5 19 without the MOS system that is chambered in 22 long rifle, and that is the Glock 44. By the way, it's about 400 bucks or so. At least that's what I got mine for. You can see them anywhere from three to 500, depending on what you're paying for it, where you're trying to get it at. Uh, accessory rail and all that good stuff, but it does not come with a threaded barrel. Those of you guys who want to put a suppressor on it will have to buy the extra uh, $150 for the suppressor, or for the uh, threaded barrel and then throw your favorite suppressor on it. But now we'll take it down there and shoot it and see how it operates. All right, so we got our mags loaded up with Remington Gold Bullet. Now these are 10 round magazines, a little bit short of normal capacity, but uh, all right, well. <laughs> okay, well, give me a second here. And this is the appropriate professional way to do this. Yeah, it really is. All right. All right, we got one chambered. And we have our first failure. That didn't take long, four rounds into the gun. Failure to extract the spent casing. Lock back. back there too. We'll try a few more mags. Maybe it's uh, gonna be just the uh, first magazine jitters kind of thing. 22s are not like known for reliability in the first place. I mean, they are a rim fire cartridge after all. This is why a lot of people talk about 22s for self-defense. They talk about how the 22 has killed more people than any other caliber. Well, first of all, that's not true. Uh, second of all, 22 as a caliber is lethal. Yes, it certainly can be. It's not immediately fight stopping necessarily unless you hit some absolute vital parts. But the real problem with 22 is a self-defense round, particularly like the preppers and stuff, a lot of preppers will hit you with that. I can carry 10,000 22 rounds. Is because they often don't work. Because the uh, rimfire cartridge in itself is just inherently less reliable. And that has been today's episode of Fun With Facts. <laughs> so we're just gonna load these 10 round magazines here and uh, I'll try to entertain you while I do so. We'll run uh, some Golden Bullet through it first and I imagine we'll get some failures. Uh, the, the Taurus failed recently, we did the TRX-22 uh, first shots and I will have the full review of that coming shortly, but spoiler alert, it runs on Federal Golden Bullet now just fine. It did have a few initial issues, but it has a lot to do with how you load the magazine and uh, this magazine looks like it's gonna give me problems as well. As you can see there, the rounds are nosedived, which is a fucking pain in the ass. All I gotta do is shake them around a little bit, get them right back into where they're supposed to be. And of course, we have a failure. What happens when you try to look cool? Nah, it's not due to me. It's due to...
Okay. So we've had a failure, I think. And of course we got another failure. I was watching the military arms channel on this and apparently it has something to do with how you uh Yeah, we got another failure. All right. Well, that kind of rules out Remington Golden Bullet for the future of this video because I don't plan on making this a tutorial on how to clear malfunctions in a cheap 22. Although that's kind of what it's been. When it runs, it shoots nice. All right, so we'll bust out the uh, the next most expensive, which is going to be the Winchester 140 grain. That's running at 1280 FPS, so. Seems to. All right, so that runs all right. We'll do another couple of mags of that, see how that goes. Okay. All right, so now we got another couple of mags of the Winchester 40 grain. Seems to work. All right, so it likes that. Run two more mags of that, and then I'll move to some CCIs. The one thing I've been doing here with these mags that I did with the TX-22, and I've done with uh, 22s in the past, is that just to get the, the rounds to line up perfectly, you just hold them upside down, loose the pressure a little bit, and get them stacked perfectly, and then uh, let go of the loading tabs, hold pressure, so they sit in the magazine perfectly. And since we've been doing that, we haven't had any problems. <laughs> and then I say that. <laughs> okay. Uh, looks like a light primer strike. So now we got the CCI mini mag, uh, 36 grain hollow points here, and these should run fine because they run fine in almost everything. So. As expected, they run fine. Now one of the problems with getting a 22 and just saying, hey, run CCI Mini Mag, is apparently A, that, and uh, B, if your gun has to have CCI Mini Mag to run effectively, you should get a new gun. Because if you're running a 22, generally you're running it for the cheap ammunition. That cheap ammunition is gonna be the Federal Bulk Pack, the Remington Golden Bullet. Uh, what's the point of running CCI in a 22? Why wouldn't you just run nine millimeters? Almost the same price. All right, so now we're back here at 35 yards with the CCI Mini Mags, which should be the most uh, reliable and the most accurate ammo. And we're gonna shoot the uh, Wilson Combat target down there. Just see what kind of groups we get. All right, we put about a 10 shot group down there. We'll see how we do. All right, so we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I imagine there's one lost in there somewhere. That's probably a flyer. That's probably me. Uh, these two, I'm not sure what the hell. That's generally the group there. That's honestly probably the largest group that I've shot in a really long time at 35 yards, actually. Uh, that's still, my hand can cover that up so relatively easy, but for reference, I shot the uh, Ruger 5.7 a little while ago, and it was about a little less than a playing card. This is like triple that, so. Well, I'm connecting with that 10-inch plate at 50, so that's pretty good. 
find the other magazine I lost in my pocket there. All right, so now we got our Kentucky windage dialed in. For some reason, I have to shoot at the base of it. I was thinking I'd have to go over it just a hair because of the 22 drop at 80 yards, but I'm actually shooting at the base of it and I seem to be connecting every time. Sometimes you just gotta find your dope. Miss the flipping last one. We shot 100 rounds of Golden Bolt, we shot 100 rounds of Winchester, we shot about 150 rounds of uh, CCI mini mags. We had two, two I think failures with the mini mags, both of them involved uh, rocking the slide back forward or using just in any way chambering the first round. And then uh, the Winchester malfunctions were one we had some chambering rounds issues and then we had one that got stuck in the tube. And then the Remington Golden Bullet ammo malfunctions were too vast to categorize. So <laughs> uh, out of 300-ish out of rounds, 350-ish rounds, we had a dozen malfunctions, something like that. There aren't that many 22s that don't malfunction, in my personal opinion. There's certainly a ton that don't malfunction that much, but uh, this is what I expected, kind of, when I got it, because I've seen lots of other people have had issues with this as well. As far as Glock goes, this is a huge miss for me. Uh, I'm gonna review this gun, I'm gonna put a thousand rounds through it. But I gotta admit, I'm not terribly interested in doing it now because of all the malfunctions clearing drills I did, and the fact that it only comes with two 10 round magazines. Uh, not to jump on the Taurus train, but the Taurus TRX-22 that I bought and uh, will be reviewing shortly has 16 round magazines. So uh, that's just a little bit more fun as opposed to the 10, but I get the 10. Uh, it's for magazine limited states along with the fact that making magazines that are uh, not just single stack, because these are single stack mags versus the Taurus TRX-22 which have staggered magazines, those are more difficult to make reliable. So if this gun's having problems with these single stack magazines, I can't even imagine what it would be like with these staggered magazines. So overall, you get the kind of shoddy, out of date Glock ergonomics and uh, you get a gun that's fairly unreliable. So that's a good advertisement for the Glock 44. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. Please help out your Oklahoma shelters and remember to recycle. I'll check you later.